Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about conducting forensic analysis of malware using Wireshark. For this lab demonstration, I will be using one installation of Kali Linux and one download of the Wireshark traffic analysis main zip file from the following location. Let's go ahead and bring up Firefox. And the location for this particular PCAP file is up on GitHub and it's called Wireshark Traffic Analysis. To download this file, I'm just going to pull down here where it says code. I'm going to download the zip. Once I have the zip downloaded, I'm going to go to that location. I'm now going to take that downloaded zip file and I'm going to drag it on over to my desktop. I'm going to close out my download location. And I'm going to minimize my browser and I'm going to minimize Wireshark. Back at my desktop, I'm going to find that downloaded file that I just moved to my desktop. I'm going to right click on it and from the context menu, I'm going to select Extract Here. I'm next going to take that extracted folder. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to find another archive and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select Extract Here as well. This file requires a password, and the password is infected. Again, the password is the word infected. I'll say OK. And now you'll see that I have the extracted folder. I'll go ahead and double click that. And inside here, I have two files. One is the PCAP, and the other one is the keylog that we're going to need to decrypt the TLS traffic. Go ahead and close out the folder. Let's open up our Wireshark. I next need to import that PCAP file that we just downloaded. To do this, I'm just going to go to File. I'm going to go to Open. I'm going to browse on over to my desktop. I'm going to find that Wireshark Traffic Analysis main folder. I'm going to open that up. And I'm next going to open up the folder Wireshark Tutorial. Open that up and you'll see that I have a PCAP available to me. I'm going to go ahead and double click that. And the PCAP is immediately imported into Wireshark. The first thing we'll need to identify is any successful TLS handshakes. Now we can filter this traffic by going up here to the filter bar. And to filter out all but the TLS successful handshakes, I'm going to go ahead and type in the following tls.handshake.type space eq1. I'll go ahead and I will initiate this filter. And you will see that we are filtering out all but the TLS traffic. The TLS traffic is encrypted, so once we do a refresh, Wireshark will not be able to display the contents of the package. Since the TLS traffic is encrypted, we're going to need to decrypt it. Now to do this, we're going to go up here to Edit. We're going to go down here to Preferences. In the Preferences, we're going to click on Protocols. Now we're going to scroll down until we come to TLS. Once we see TLS, we're going to select that option, and in the right window pane, we click on the bottom Browse button, and we're going to browse on over to our extracted folder on our desktop, and we're going to load in the Wireshark tutorial keylog file.txt. Go ahead and double click that. Now you can say OK, and immediately we're able to start reading the contents of the encrypted TLS packets. We next need to filter for any HTTP TLS handshake traffic, excluding SSDP. Now to do this, I'm going to go back up in my filter toolbar and input the following filter expression. We can go ahead and launch this filter. As we filter down through the packets, we see a GET request. This is calling on a particular DLL that is labeled invest underscore 20 dot DLL, and it's coming from a source using the URL of foodsgoodforliver.com. If we right click on the GET request and from our context we select follow and from the next context menu we select HTTP stream we can see exactly what the DLL is that is being downloaded. And so you see where this line says this program cannot be run in DOS mode. Everything down below that is the actual DLL. 
And to download this DLL file for further analysis, I'm going to go over here to File. And I'm going to scroll down here to where it says Export Objects. And from here, in the next context menu, I'm going to select HTTP. In the next window, I'm going to find the DLL that is labeled invest underscore 20 dot DLL. And we see it right here labeled Packet 632. I'm next going to go down to the bottom of this window, click on Save. And I'm going to find my extracted folder on my desktop. And I'm going to save the DLL inside this folder. I'll go ahead and click on Save. And now I can close out this window here. To help us with identifying the DLL and what type of malware it could be, we're going to use a site called VirusTotal. So I'm going to open up my browser one more time. And in the address bar, I'm going to type in VirusTotal.com. And once I get to the site, I'm going to ensure that the option for a file is selected. I'm next going to click the button where it says Choose File. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to click on the Extracted Folder, Wireshark Traffic Analysis, Main. Here I'm going to find that DLL. I'm going to double click it. And in just a moment it comes back with the results saying it has been identified by 57 vendors for antivirus as being malicious. And if we click on the details, we can learn just about everything we ever wanted to know about this particular piece of malware. You can scroll down, you can see the different names that it's used in the past. You can find the signatures, you can find the file version information, you can find the compiler products that were used, and you can learn that the original name of this piece of malware was called crowddry.dll. Now we also know that the DLL came from a domain or a URL using the name foodsgoodforliver.com. And if we take this and we copy it and we go back to our virus total site and we go back to the logon page, we can click on where it says URL and we can put this information into virus total for a scan. Go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back and lets you know that this URL has been flagged by at least six security vendors as being malicious. Now if we adjust our filter one more time for HTTP requests with TLS excluding SSDP, we'll see that we have a strange request for a particular PHP file to go out and contact a particular IP address. If we right click on this and we say follow and from the stream we select TLS stream, we'll see that the traffic is trying to contact a particular gateway but it's coming back as a bad source. And we see that here where it says HTTP forward slash 1.1502 bad gateway. So the PHP file is attempting to contact a command and control that is currently out of action. We can go ahead and close out the stream window. Lastly, we can identify the name of the machine that has been infected by filtering out everything but NetBIOS traffic. So up here in the filter bar, I'm going to type in NBNS. Once I have that typed in, I'm going to go ahead and launch the filter. And you'll see that we have identified the infected machine as belonging to a desktop that is labeled desktop-u54-alpha-j8k. And you'll see that there's a number of entries for this particular machine. And so in this short video presentation, you got to see how we can use Wireshark to perform some network forensics by just examining suspicious network traffic that is coming into our network or attempting to leave our network. In this example, we found a suspicious DLL file, and when we downloaded that file and ran it through VirusTotal, we found out that it was malware. If you got any questions or concerns about anything that was covered in this short video presentation, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and thank you for watching.